Praise God, YouTube Christian. The double glasses are already on. Do you know why? Because I'm in this middle, middle of this study <clears throat> to present a video, and then we'll talk about it on my next live. But here's what happened. The last live, I prayed, and I prayed this prayer many times. Lord, if there's something I need to know, please give it to me because I'm thinking September 11th, the 25th of Elul, the appointed time. It could be the first day of creation. Um, you know, 9-11 could be Jesus's birthday, our birthday, Isaac's birthday, the Shunammite son's birthday. So I think I got the date, 9-11, right? <clears throat> well, I prayed, God gave me new information. So it looks like it's not 9-11. Will I hold out a little bit of hope for 9-11? Yes, but it looks like it is the Feast of Trumpets. This will blow your mind. So I'm in the middle of this study. I just thought, you know what, Lord? I'll turn the camera on, and if you want to study with me how I do it when the camera's off, this is how I do it. So It'll be a little bit weird for me, but let's see if we can get it done. And if it if it doesn't get done, then I won't post it. But <clears throat> hear me, all the people who can't wait till 9-11 comes and goes to deem me a false prophet, I search for the truth. I never guaranteed 9-11, number one. Number two, I said, it looks like it could be 9 9 9 10 9 11 being the 25th of Elul. The 25th of Elul, the only time Elul's mentioned in the Bible is Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15, and it's got 25, and the wall was completed in 52 days. A backwards 25. Add them up, it's 77. It's all glory to God. So listen, I'm boasting in the Lord. I prayed and he gave me this thought the very next day after that live. I wasn't waiting on it. I wasn't expecting it. Listen, this is only a few days we're talking about. So I could have just waited it out. The Lord popped this thought into my head and you're going to see this thought and it's unbelievable golden nugget. So pause the video, grab a drink, grab something to eat, grab your Bible, Open up your mind and let's go. Oh, praise God, this is so good. And listen, I'm gonna do a, a semi little recap here for those of you that did not watch any of my other videos. The rapture is a birth. That's Revelation 12, five, okay? The man child is delivered and caught up to the throne of God. And listen, people that rail against that, it's absurd, and here's why. I don't think this has ever been said before. So the mirror verse of Revelation 12, 5, harpazo, rapture, us being caught up, is Isaiah 66, 7. It says, before her pain came, the man-child was delivered. Now, that's obviously a pre-tribulation rapture, so that one's in the book. So all the people... There's not one verse that says pre-tribulation rapture. Never, never. There's not one verse. There's one verse right there. Isaiah 66, 7. Before her pain came, Israel, right? They're giving birth. We're breaking the womb of Israel. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. So listen to this. You, you get it. God gave me like a bonus nugget. So I thought to myself, man, I could prove this, that Revelation 12, 5 is not Jesus' birth because Jesus wasn't caught up as a child. He, he, he ascended as the Lord of glory after his resurrection. So when you just read the scriptures, you know, the child was caught up to the throne of God. So you know it's not Christ. Anyway, I thought, man, is there any verses in the Bible that show Mary was in pain before she delivered? Because before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. So that would even disprove it. 
in, in that way. And I've never heard anybody do that before. So you won't even believe this. Matthew, about the birth of Christ and the book of Matthew, which is, you know, to the Jews, the whole thing, doesn't say anything. It says, then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took to him his wife and knew her not till she brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. Matthew chapter two. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east. There's, there's nothing about his birth. Just as a matter of fact, God's moving the story along. Mark, the book of Mark, there's zero about it. Zero. So I, I was kind of fascinated by this. Mark chapter one, verse one, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God, as it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before your face, which shall prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. They pick, Mark picks up the story. He's already grown, ready to start his ministry. Nothing about Mary being pregnant. So now you go to Luke, and Luke's got, <laughs> did you ever know Luke chapter one has 80 verses all about the birth of Christ. Luke is the gospel to the bride. We're going to be born, born again. The rapture is a birth, just like the son of promise, Isaac, just like the son of promise, the ultimate, Jesus, just like the Shunammite son in 2 Kings chapter 4, 8 through 37. If you don't know that story, you got to read it. It's a total rapture scenario. And please, if you look at all my videos, the one with 100,000 views, that's where I break down the barren women. That is the, the greatest revelation we got. It's a rapture scenario. Praise God, all glory to God. You got to watch that video. God blew that one up. So all these verses, it, it comes down to Luke chapter two, verse five. It says they went, the census came out and they had to go to be taxed, right? To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife being great with child. So I looked up that word. It's a one-time word, great with child. The root word means to swell. So she was big. She was huge, you know, big belly, the belly swelling. We know pregnant women, their feet swell, you know, all the stuff that goes on with it. So she was in pain normally like a woman is when they give birth. So Mary didn't have a pain-free birth when she delivered the man-child. So it proves in a long way that Christ was not the child of Revelation 12.5. Okay, here's the nugget. Remember we did the 75s? Israel is 75 right now. Abraham was called out at 75. 75 souls were saved into Egypt when the tribulation came. So another 75 reference. So I'm reading along the story, trying to find out if there's any verses that show Mary is in pain in her pregnancy, like all the other women had pain in their pregnancy. So I'm reading along. Uh, blessed be the Lord God, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. This is John the Baptist's father giving a prophecy. So let me back it up to 67. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promise to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, his agreement that he had with Abraham. Verse 73, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, 
that he would grant to us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. This is Luke chapter one, verse 75. So here's another 75. So that we might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. That was not fulfilled in Israel when Messiah came. They rejected him and crucified him. So that is future. That's us. That's 175 in holiness and righteousness. We're never going to be that until we're raptured. So God put it in verse 75, in holiness and righteousness before him. The child is caught up to the throne of God. We're in his presence. So I won't be dogmatic about that. It was just something cool that I found in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life all the days of our eternal life. Praise God, it's all in there. And then look at this nugget. So I kept reading, of course. <laughs> okay, so that's 75, here's 76. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. Zechariah, still prophesying through the Holy Ghost, talking about his own son, John the Baptist. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for you shall go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us. Verse 79, I just told you about the spirits in prison the, you know, all the people at the time of the flood, some of them, the Nephilim, uh, mighty men, men of renown, God calls them men. Okay, I st listen, I still got people railing against the video that I said, hey, I got a Bible study coming up. You're not going to believe it. The people in the flood got saved, even probably the Nephilim and the mighty men. People are on that video saying, this is crazy. I've agreed with you before, but you fell down and bumped your head this time. You didn't even watch the study. The study's posted. It's on the live. Everybody who was on there was blown away by the grace of God, seeing it right out of the word of God. So I didn't manipulate anything. The word spoke for itself. Praise God. Here's another verse that adds to it. Look at this. It's verse 79, Luke 1, 79. 78 says, through the tender mercy of our God, God's grace, his mercy, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us, Christ. 79, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to give light to them that sit in the dark prison in the shadow of death. They died. That was their judgment. They're in prison. Jesus went down and preached to the spirits in prison, praise God, and gave them light. They believed, not all of them, the ones that believed, he led captivity captive and took them up. Now in the middle of this video, I gotta let that Dumb dog in. This is why pets will not be raptured. Ben, go! Your insubordination will not be tolerated anymore. I'm in the middle of a video Bible study and you're out there yapping at the door. So don't think that you're gonna make the rapture now, pal. House is a mess, don't worry about it. I'm exhausted. This is a Bible study. Everybody relax and enjoy it. So just like I told you in that study, I said there's probably many other verses that confirm this whole teaching, this doctrine. There's another one, Luke 179, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Praise God. All right, now let's get back to the nugget. 
Why is it Feast of Trumpets? Let's, so the rapture is a birth. The discovery came little by little. God led me through this little by little, and I'm always bouncing it off my Clapper family. So, you know, they're doing the feedback. So we're technically all doing it together. But, you know, I'm doing the study and, and figuring this out through the grace of God, God's leading. It's the only way I could have ever done it. So I am boasting in the Lord. Okay, so it started with... Why was Isaac's birth an appointed time in the time of life? That didn't make any sense to me. No sense at all. So I'm pretending I'm in a Bible study now and I'm writing it out to make a video later. But guess what? The camera's already rolling. So here we go. <clears throat> Genesis 17. And God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name, and I will bless her and give you a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be the mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. And then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. <laughs> this is amazing. So the Revelation 12 sign, Virgo, 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 forget Virgo, that's Sarah, that's Sarah. Sarah means princess, she's got the crown on her head, she's the mother of all nations, she's the one giving birth to us, she is the spiritual mother, heavenly Jerusalem, Sarah. We are breaking the womb of Israel, so... 1721, God said, don't worry about Ishmael. I'm going to take care of Ishmael, but my covenant is with Isaac. Listen, before Sarah even conceived, God called his name Isaac. He said, he's going to be Isaac, and I'm making my covenant with him. He's the son of promise. 1721, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear to you at this set time in the next year. Genesis 18, 10. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, your wife shall have a son. Genesis 18, 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return to you according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. So, I was asking the question, why Abraham waited 25 years. Why would this birth have to be an appointed time unless God was pointing to something? He wanted us to see it. So now you go to the amazing chapter or book of Galatians chapter four, which truly is a powerhouse chapter in the Bible. Galatians chapter four. 4.4 4 says, in the fullness of time, God sent his son into the world. So Galatians 4 is all loaded. So I'm going to start with verse uh, 21. Tell me, you that desire to be under the law, you want to be under the law, Torah observer, got to keep the commandments, it's part of your salvation. I'm telling you, you're going to end up in Matthew chapter 7. Don't do it. You're saved by grace through faith. That's it. Tell me, you that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? Do, do you know what you think you're keeping, what it says to you? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a slave, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the slave was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was born by promise. Do you understand that? Sarah didn't really fully believe or know the plan of God. So she said, well, if we're gonna have a seed, take my slave woman, Hagar, and have a son with, with her, and then that'll be our line. See, that's born of the flesh. That was man's idea. Sarah came up with it, Abraham agreed with it, slept with her, had Ishmael, pretty simple. But he of the free woman was by promise. Now, Sarah was the free woman. She wasn't a slave. She was going to be the mother of all nations. 
Verse 24, which things are an allegory? God tells us right in his word right there. It's a type. It's a figure. So if it's an allegory, what's it an allegory for? The rapture. The rapture. This whole scenario is rapture. Which things are an allegory for these are the two covenants? The one from Mount Sinai, Dr. Barry's whole world, which genders to bondage. That, that word genders means leads. Which leads to bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai, Arabia, and answers to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. Mount Sinai produced the law. God married Israel. They cheated on him instantly. The law was only given to show human beings, God's people first, you're, you're sinning. You can't keep this law. I'm showing you that you're a sinner and therefore you'll realize you need a savior. People, you got to keep the Ten Commandments. You got to keep the commandments. You got to do this. You got to do this to be saved. It's impossible to keep the commandments. They were never made to be kept. God said, here, here's the commandments. See if you can keep them. And then when we realize Hey, we can't keep them. I looked at that woman. I lusted after her. Oh, this guy just built a big, beautiful house. I coveted that house. Man, I wish I had a house like that. You know, this guy did this. I committed murder in my heart. I stole from that person. Whatever commandments you're breaking, you know you're breaking them. So you think, Lord, I can't keep this law. What must I do now? I'll send you a promise, a prophecy, the ultimate son of promise. It's very simple to me. Some people just don't get this. For Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answers to Jerusalem, which now is in bondage with her children. So they're under the law. They're in bondage. They're in sin. Listen, what that means is they're slaves to sin because Christ has not set them free. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Heavenly Jerusalem. Sarah, in, in the spiritual prophetic sense. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, rejoice, you barren that bear not. Break forth and cry, you that never travailed, that travail not. For the desolate has many more children than you. The, the fleshly children of sin, 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 sin. The desolate has a lot of children. No problem there. Has many more children than she which has a husband. So again, God married them. They cheated on them. And look, Dr. Barry's still holding on to his phantom feast of wine. I don't know why. He thinks the Feast of Wine, this glorious event, is Moses coming down the mountain while they were chanting and worshiping the golden calf, where they were saying, the golden calf led us out of Egypt. This was the most horrible act in maybe Israel's history besides crucifying Messiah. And somehow it's turned into this phantom feast of wine and the true Pentecost, by the way. So this is why that whole thing was wrong. I'm not picking on Dr. Barry, even though it sounds like it, but he still hasn't learned that it, that's all gibberish. And it's right here. Mount Sinai is Hagar, which leads to bondage. So do we want the Mount Sinai scenario that's all bondage? No. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all, for it is written. Oh, I read that. So rejoice, you barren. That's Isaiah 54.1. So Paul's quoting 54.1. So at the time of this revelation, I said, man, the birth, we all knew rapture was a birth since Scotty Clark taught it to us way back when. 
So I thought the birth is us being birthed by Sarah, Mother Jerusalem. We break the womb of Mother Jerusalem. We're the first child. So the Shunammite story, you got to read it because that son, the unnamed son was born at the appointed time in the time of life, 2 Kings 4, 8 through 37. <sighs> Just lost my train of thought. So we break the womb of Mother Jerusalem. This was huge revelation. Oh, so the Shunammite woman, Shunammite means double resting place. And listen, I don't know a ton about the double, but we know whoever breaks the womb is dedicated to the Lord and they receive a double inheritance. So because we're breaking the womb, we're getting the double inheritance. We are the heavenly people. Jesus said the first will be last, the last will be first, that's us. The Jews got the message first, they're last because they rejected it, they cheated on the Lord, the whole thing. So when you get into the whole double thing, that's what Shunammite means, it's unbelievable. I'm telling you, it's all there. I must have put it on that video, the other video. So this is how the revelation kept coming to me. And I thought, well, well what about all the other barren women? And then God gave me the whole scenario. And I'm not going to recap that. Um, the whole thing. So we start with the rapture, which is Isaac being born, the son of promise. And then we end with the Shunammite woman. We come back with her second coming appointed time because the Bible says she was a great woman. We're going to be the great bride of Christ, the wife of the lamb. And we're going to shine like the sun because we're going to be one with him. It's a perfect story. Watch my other videos. I'm trying to get to the nugget. Verse 28, 428. Now we, and this was revelation. Now we brethren as Isaac was, we're not Ishmael, we're not Mount Sinai, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Praise God. That's when it all clicked that we will be born at the appointed time in the time of life. So again, what is that time? I thought it was Elul 25, which is September 11th. I prayed to God. I said, Lord, if there's any more information that I need to know, please let me know. That was the end of the last live that I did on YouTube. The next day, he put the thought in my head. What thought did he put in my head? <laughs> he put Job 38. So I, I know this scripture that the sons of God, the angels of God sang when they watched God create the heavens and the earth, okay? And especially the earth, because this is what we're talking about. So if you don't know the book of Job, I mean, his friends came to comfort him. Job, all 10 children were killed. He had boils on him from head to toe. His wife told him, curse God and die you're holding on to your dignity. What are you doing? Curse God and die. He said, you speak like one of the foolish women speak. Job is gold. I can't wait to meet Job. Praise God. So Job got to a point where he was so frustrated with his friends. He's basically demanding an answer from God. Like, you know, why did this all happen to me type deal? We know the story. God said, hey, Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Which we know Satan still has access to the Lord. The Lord's controlling every drop of what he does. So anyway, I know they sang at creation. So Job 37 is where God breaks his silence and he does answer Job. So Job 37, Job 38, I got the wrong one. See, in a Bible study, there's no pressure. There's no time limit. Job 38, 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and you will answer me. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? 
declare, if thou hast understanding, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who has stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? And listen, I forgot the number, but I think it's like 84 questions in a row that God speaks to Job out of the whirlwind, like a mini tornado. You know, he's zipping it up. Answer me this. Verse 7. <coughs> <clears throat> Satan always tries to stop nuggets. It doesn't work, praise God. This was the verse that God popped into my head and I had to check it out to see if it was of God. So, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, so when he popped it into my head, I knew shouting was like the same as Feast of Trumpets. I knew there was shouting at the Feast of Trumpets. And listen, Feast of Trumpets doesn't have a lot written about it. There's not much to that feast. So <clears throat> I looked that up. Now we're going to, you know, we're going to go into the words. So I had to look up this word, of course, shouted for joy. It's 7321, which is a great number. Seven is a God number. Three is a God number. And then 21 is three more sevens. 7321, the word is Ruah. Ruah, right? Ruah HaKodesh, we all know what that means. So it means to shout, to cry, to give a blast. It could be for an alarm. It could be for war. But it could be a shout in triumph a shout of joy. So we know they were shouting for joy because they're watching God create and they were singing and shouting for joy. So in the context, we, we don't say, oh, this must have been a war cry. No, we know what it means. It's a shout in triumph, a shout for joy. The word is ruah, okay? So now I'm gonna do a little back and forth with you. So Leviticus 23, where we're first told about Yom Teruah, right? The Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Blowing. So it only has three verses. Leviticus 23, 23. There's 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a rest a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. Now, all of these seven feasts are a holy convocation, a dress rehearsal. None of them say memorial. Memorial, this is gold. It means a remembrance, right? Memorial, remember. It means a record, keep a record. So when the rapture happens, what did God say on my other video when I showed you that progression in Isaiah? Before it shoots forth, I'm, first he said, I'm gonna tell you something new. Before it shoots forth, I'll tell you. He'll tell us the rapture. So all you people, don't be a date setter. You can't know, nobody knows, nobody knows, nobody knows. God said he'll tell us before it shoots forth. Learn something in your life, please. I'm going to tell you something new. Before it shoots forth, I'll tell you. Then he said, it shall shoot forth. Then he said, hey, when it shoots forth, you'll know it. You'll know it. So back here in the original Feast of Trumpets, God said, it'll be a memorial. It'll be a remembrance. It'll be a record. Record it. Remember that day. Why? Because in the tribulation, pure hell, the great tribulation, the last half, which is focused on Israel, they got to figure out the fig tree generation. They got to figure out, well, when was the rapture? It was September 17th, 2023. What day is it now? I'm not sure. The sun's been darkened. The moon's been darkened. The Antichrist has changed the appointments and the seasons. 
tried to change the calendar, does change the calendar. It's not going to be easy to track time in the tribulation. God said, this is the only time he said, let it be a memorial to you, a record, a remembrance. Praise God. So look at this. Leviticus 23, 24. I'm mat we're matching up the other one, right? So a blowing of the trumpets. It's 8643. Remember the other one was 7321. What's the word? Well, we know what Feast of Trumpets official name is Yom Teruah, the day of blowing, right? Teruah. The other one was Ruah. So Ruah is the root word for Teruah. So there's the connection with the angels of God shouting and singing as they watch him create the earth. Praise God. I hope you're getting this. So Teruah, they were doing Ruah. This is Teruah. God says, remember it. And now look at the definition. Shout for joy. Shout for joy. A blast. It could be an alarm. It could be a cry. It's a shout for joy. And in this context, the Feast of Trumpets, the appointment is joy. We're shouting for joy. So there's that connection, right? So I thought, okay, it, this thought must be from God because that matches up. Now, re listen, the ultimate question is, I'm already convinced that we're gonna be born at the appointed time in the time of life, just like Isaac. So do we have any way of knowing that day? Well, I thought maybe it's the sixth day when he breathed life into Adam, or maybe it's the first day. Well, the answer is it's the first day. So we thought Elul 25, September 11th is that first day. Tribulation will start on Feast of Trumpets. We got to go before Feast of Trumpets. This is my take. I got the videos on it. Now, God gave me this thought. Here's the new thought that makes it the day of blowing. Ruah to Ruah. Okay, so go back to Job 38 and the very next verse. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, he's asking questions to Job, like, were you there when this happened? Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth, shoot forth, spring forth. Jesus said in Luke 21, 30, when it shooteth forth, you will see it and you will know it. They miss the rapture. Praise God. Here it is. Break forth. Or, or who shut up the sea water with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb. As it had issued out of the womb. We break the womb of Mother Jerusalem spiritual Sarah, literal Sarah, ultimately, because she started it. God put womb right in there as they're shouting, Ruah, Yam Teruah, we will break forth out of the womb. So you go back to Genesis chapter one. This is why it's day one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse two, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. There's the waters. So verse five, and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. So Genesis one through five, chapter one, one through five is all the first day. So the sons of God were singing and shouting as the water, God, God created something out of nothing. He spoke everything into existence. We know that. It, the word is ex, ex hilo. I forgot that word. It's something out of nothing. So um, they saw the water shoot forth, like God said, like 
out of a womb. Hey, Job, were you there when the water shot forth like out of the out of the womb and they were ruah, they were shouting, praising. The day of blowing is a teruah, a day of shouting, praising, joy, blow the trumpets. So praise God. Listen, could we be raptured on 9-11? I still, a little bit maybe, but I asked God, he answered the prayer, there it is. It is the Feast of Trumpets, and we got it all out of the word of God. No offense to the asteroid watchers, okay? Every asteroid, there's a million of them. Check the name, check the number, check the strongest concordance. Okay, let's look at the sun. Now we're looking at sunspots. We're looking at the numbers of sunspots. Check the name, check the number. Let's look in the Greek concordance. Listen, if they're called to do that, and maybe they are, God bless them. This comes out of the word of God. Rua, Terua, the day of blowing, the seventh month, the first day. Hosea 5, 7. I will destroy you at the new moon. So now we know there's minimal maybe 24 hours gap in between uh, rapture and tribulation. And again, we always forget this. When the rapture truly happens, let's say it's the 17th now, and this is what I'm thinking because of what God just gave me. The evil world is going to know it. All the elites are going to know it. You don't think they're going to know the rapture? You don't think the rapture is going to change this world? Satan's going to know, wow, my time is here. And God's probably already told him. So forget the appointments, forget everything business as usual. It's going to change everything instantly because finally the real rapture has come. It's going to rock the world. So maybe the 17th we get raptured. Maybe there's three days of darkness after that. And instead of the summit, it's the official Daniel seven-year peace treaty, Antichrist. Listen, remember King Charles in that one thing that you know went viral? He said he will have billions at his disposal. And everybody's like, who's he talking about? Who's he talking about? The Antichrist. Has to be the Antichrist. Remember that? What if after the rapture, the smoke clears, however long it is, hours, days, it's not going to be long. What if this guy just appears? That, that wicked can't be revealed until him who restrains has taken his hands off. We're gone. The real rapture has come. So the next time anybody sees anybody on TV, it's the guy Charles was talking about. Here he is confirming a peace deal with many. Boom, tribulation starts, we're in heaven, the rapture's there. But God led me to all this. The barren women of the Bible, we come from Sarah, we break the womb of Mother Jerusalem, it is a birth, we get a double portion, praise God, it's at the appointed time, in the time of life. So the first day of creation, when that angel sang, I didn't even say that. That's the time of life. So it's probably not Elul 25 slash 911. That's the whole point of this. The first day of creation when the angels were ruah, when they were singing and shouting for joy is the Feast of Trumpets. So the first day of creation when you back it all up was the Feast of Trumpets. Praise God. And, and listen, I got to do this because this, I, I forgot this. Back to Luke 1. And listen, I'm not dogmatic about this, but we think Christ's birthday is the same as Isaac, Shunammite, and our rapture date. Like, I believe that. I don't know if I can prove it, but look at this. Okay. I'm trying to find where she had, had the baby. The, the shepherds came, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Okay, they all wondered, da, 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 but Mary kept all these things, pondered them in her heart, and the shepherds returned, glorifying, praising God. Look at this. And when eight days were accomplished for the circum 
circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Look at this. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So now you got eight days circumcision. And I looked this up. This is, um, oh Lord, where did I write it? Leviticus 12, 1 and 2. So that's Luke 2.22, by the way, when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, after you have a baby, it's like being on your period, you're unpure, all that. It's Leviticus 12, 1 and 2. So now you got eight days to the circumcision and you got seven days of purification. So when they were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. And this is when Simeon and the prophetess, what's her name? Why do I forget her name? Annas. I should not have forgotten her name. You know who I'm talking about. Anna. Anna the prophetess. So Simeon and Anna, this is when they brought him to Jerusalem after 15 days, eight days circumcision, seven days purification. And it says right there, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written. This is what you do every male that opens the womb. So that's when the prophecy Simeon said, this is the salvation of Israel, all of it. That's 15 days. So if Christ was born on the Feast of Trumpets, 15 days later is the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. He's in the temple at Jerusalem. There's God tabernacling with man. So he was presented to the Lord on Tabernacles. He was born on Feast of Trumpets. Listen, we're going home. <laughs> This is the guarantee. It's all out of the word of God. And listen, I, I, I'll probably have to post this video because I'm all paranoid. I'll rewatch this video 10 times before I post it. And I didn't get it all ready, but I did it in real time. Probably left out stuff. All glory to God. Do you understand? So if 9-11 passes, it's not a big deal. I think it's the Feast of Trumpets, the absolute appointed time. Feast of Trumpets was the first day of creation because of the Ruah, the Yom Teruah. It's a memorial, remember this. So way back in Adam's day, they all knew the first day of creation was ultimately Feast of Trumpets, which they didn't call it that back then because God introduced it later, but they knew it was called the time of life when life began, when God spoke it into existence on day one. All glory to God. I hope that blesses you. And listen, I think I'm going to go live tomorrow night, maybe tonight. Today's Friday. <sighs> I didn't get much sleep last night. You guys, I know you're praying for my sleep. Thank you. Praise God. So maybe we talk about this tonight or tomorrow. I can't even decide. I'm so scrambled. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe tonight. If, if not tonight, tomorrow. So if I don't go live tonight, it'll be tomorrow night, 8, 8.30-ish, Saturday night, Praise God, we'll talk about this. We'll talk about other stuff. I'm telling you, you got to tell your family, you got to go out on a limb and guarantee this, okay? High watch dates have come and gone. This is it. God has led us to this monumental moment. It is all perfect. Psalms perfect, fig tree perfect, feast of trumpets now perfect. And remember, the real Revelation 12 sign was 9-23-17. Perfect. Right on the money, right on the day. Now we got 9-17-23. So 9-23-17. Now we got 9-17-23. And 17 is a Sunday, the church's day, the day that he rose from the dead. Praise God. 
Oh, there, there's even something else. Let me add it to it. We're doing a Bible study, right? So I kept reading, of course, because that's what you do. So, and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. This is Luke chapter 2, verse 41. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and Mary didn't know it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, been with the other people, went a day's journey and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both hearing them and asking them questions. Look at that. After three days, they found him in the temple. Passover, three days, it's just... I never seen that before. So <laughs> that's that's a reference to the resurrection. Obviously, I tried to make something else out of it. Maybe you can. I don't know. But all glory to God. I just kept reading. I'm like, man, there's another three. There's a lot of three day references. Oh, this this is amazing. All right, all right I got to say this too. The Shunammite story. When the boy went out with the reapers. And he died at noon that day. She had to go get Elisha at Mount Carmel. It was 20 miles away from the city Shunem. It was probably, it took three days to go there and back. The father said, why are you going to bother him? It's not a new moon or it's not a Sabbath. So I took that as it's not going to be Feast of Trumpets. You remember me saying that? But by the time he was raised from the dead, three days later, maybe it was now a new moon and he came back to life. So I don't forget the reasons why I think something's not, the reasons why I think something is. It all has to gel in my mind or it drives me insane. So... Praise God, all glory to God. Let's go. Rapture's coming, 9-17-23. That's what it looks like. I can't guarantee it till it happens, but I'm telling you, I believe this is it. All glory to God. Let's go.